My name is Brad Sheldon, I'm the founder of the Business Support Organisation and today's video we'll be covering the Question Time event from the 27th of Jan. Um, for those who haven't actually been to a Question Time event before, very, very, very simple event where we're trying to tackle the problem that lots of business owners face that you only know in business what you know and you don't know what you don't know. So we get lots of questions from the, from the uh, people who are attending and we pass those questions back into the audience um, for, for them to answer. The good side is we get lots of great content, uh, loads of um, really good um, conversations going. The downside is we have no idea what's going to happen. So enjoy the video. Um, please bear in mind there may be the odd swear word. We obviously have to be careful of that. And please don't uh, forget to uh, like, subscribe and to um, share this page if you think it's useful for other people. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to start the meeting off now, if we may. Um, so we've just started recording. As I was just mentioning there, if anybody doesn't want to be recorded, not a problem at all. Uh, if you can let us know in the usual style, if you can send us a letter, uh, that would be fantastic. If you send it second class, and as long as we receive the next five minutes, that would be perfectly fine. Or uh, I've been told we can do like a pixelated thing over your face, or if you put a bag on it, something like that, cushion in the way, something like that will be perfectly fine. I mean, we certainly won't use you as a video. So Adam what used about, all that stuff, bag over the head. Yeah, yeah what it's about orange in your mouth. What, what was it? Who was that? Sorry? It's me. What about Darth Vader voices? Can I have a Darth <laughs> Vader voice just for the sake of having Darth Vader's voice? Sure. Yeah, it sounds good to me. It sounds, okay. it sounds, like, it sounds good to me. Um, Jack, can we do Darth Vader voices? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, why not, eh? Is that, is that going to cost me more? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is the thing, you've got to dub it all over, so I might even have to get Michelle to redo it in a Darth Vader voice. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, the, so the challenge has been set. So, okay, ladies and gents, so uh, today we're starting uh, the... It's actually... A, it's difficult to say, but we're nearly a month in, and this is the first question time event of the evening. Um, I think everybody's been to a question time event before, with the exception of Becky, who is a visitor. Uh, so Becky is somebody I met at a um, Business Buzz networking event a week, week and a half ago. Uh, Becky, are you coming from Banbury? Is that right? I'm in Warwick. In Warwick. Sorry, I do apologise. Uh, so it's part of the world. It is absolutely lovely. We've got castles and everything. Yeah. Uh, and we have uh, Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence, um, welcome. Uh, I believe this is your first question time meeting with ours as well. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll take I that as a so, yes. Fantastic, brilliant. So for those who, who've not been on this before, it's a really, really, really simple format. Um, we've had a number of questions posed to us by, by members as you've as you registered. Uh, there's been some absolutely fantastic questions. So the idea is I'll go through these questions in no particular order. And as members, we'll all chip in and try to answer them. There's some, to be fair, most of them are actually serious questions as well, which is quite disappointing in all fairness uh, but before we start that what we're going to do is to have people introduce themselves if we may uh, I'll just call your names out as you appear on the screen and if you can do literally an eight second introduction so eight seconds that's all we need literally name company name and what you do uh, we haven't got John Cross on today so we won't try and squeeze it out into all other things um, so if we start with that if, if we may um, Vicky Lovegrove if we can go to you first Hey everybody, it's Vicky from 73 Design, Graphic Design and Coaching. Brilliant. Uh, Paul Jones? Oh, Paul Jones here from Tiger Protect. Uh, it's a substance lock when your tires prevent get punctures. Brilliant. Uh, Gary? Gary Watkins, Q6 IT Services. We manage your IT services and systems for you. Uh, Charlotte? Charlotte Thorpe, Phonetic Communications, a PR and communications agency, helping businesses to stand out and grow. Uh, brilliant. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Gill. Dave Gill, ProGas Security, covering all your security needs for commercial and domestic. Uh, Val. Val Jones from Revital U, looking for guinea pigs to try our new products. Uh, Adam. Adam Jones from Unico3, accountancy practice, looking after after startups and scale-ups. Oh, multi-award winning accountancy practice. How, how, many, how many awards? Three. Three. <laughs> six. No, we've got six, actually. Mm -hmm. Just BSO awards, we have three. Just but three. That's, that's, that's very in interesting. Total, we have six. Cool. Um, small girl called Steve. <laughs> uh, Neil, sorry. 
I'm sorry for a second. I that, that went over me. It's like it's not my name or something. I'm really Neil from PhD Design, and we are a multi award winning graphic designer. Fantastic, uh, Pierre. Pierre Watson, aka Pierre the Bear. Effective copywriting for your business. Cool, uh, Mr. Baker. Yep, Lee Baker, IT technophobes, uh, and I help you out with your computer problems, both business and home. Fantastic. Uh, Michelle? Michelle from the Geek Coach and the Tech Leader Academy, yeah. creating IT leaders that build and inspire. Brilliant. Uh, Becky? Hi, I'm Becky from Soft Focus, and um, we do uh, corporate video production, photography, and virtual tours. Brilliant. Uh, Mr. Lander? I'm Paul Lander from the multi award winning Zecco of Solutions, who do web design, web development, and digital marketing. Is that still the second place award you've got there, Paul? It is, yes. It okay, is. Cool. Just, it just is. checking. I'll, I'll still listen. I'll, I'll take second place in the crisp bag opening contest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Jack? Hi, I'm Jack uh, from DigiVideo, and I. Uh, Film and edit all your production, uh, sorry, your promo videos for your businesses. Fantastic. Uh, Lawrence? Lawrence, Beware the Dog Studio. I make, I make animated uh, movies. Brilliant. Um, Mr. Pulferman? Uh, Dean Pulferman, Promo Nutrition and Fitness, getting people fit and healthy with real food and movement. And uh, finally, Yannicka? Uh, yes, good evening. Apologies for being late. I just couldn't get the client off the phone. Um, my name is Janika. I'm, um, um, I run Time Assist, the virtual uh, assistant business, and I help you save time. Thank you that's much. absolutely fantastic. I think that's everybody. I haven't missed anybody at all, have I? No, brilliant. So we'll, we'll move into the main part of the meeting for the purpose of Becky and for Lawrence. Uh, I better explain that there are always rules at BSO events. Um, so if you can make sure they adhere to them because rules are rules. And, um, and, and the two rules are, um, Becky, quite simply, is first, you have to be prepared to have fun. And the second one is we don't allow political correctness. So on that vein, just be yourself. So um, when I basically go to the person for whichever question we start with, um, we'll ask people to jump in. Uh, if people can keep themselves muted uh, when they're not talking, but obviously feel free to obviously open yourself and, and un open your mics. And also if you can use the raise hand function, uh, if you'd like to jump in. Um, that For those who haven't been on this much over, over the, the last few weeks uh, you'll now find the raise hand function actually within reactions so if you open reaction, reactions click on raise hand and it'll it'll notify me at my end so uh Yannicka, i'm actually really happy that you've um, you've come on today because um neil you've raised your hand no entirely by accident you're just checking, just making sure it works. That's absolutely fine. Uh, so Yannicka, I'm I'm really happy you've come on because I was I was extremely impressed with your with your question. Um, do you remember what your question was? Yes, 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 I did. Um, so, um, do you struggle with imposter syndrome? And how do you, if you do, how do you deal with that? I think that's a to start us off and create a little bit of debate going on there. I think it's a great question. Would anybody like to jump in to start? Uh, remember, if people don't jump in, I'll pick on people. Yeah, I'll start. No, cool. I don't suffer from it. Well Excellent. done. Brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> well done. We'll next question now. Uh, Annika, <laughs> can I ask you why you asked the question? Because I suffer heavily and I am just okay. uh, need some um, uh, other ideas how to deal with that. So does, does everyone know what the imposter syndrome is, by the way? I, I no. appreciate it. Does anyone not know what imposter syndrome is? I was going to ask exactly that. What, what, what is it, Annika? <sighs> okay, so imposter syndrome, um, from a intellectual point of view, it started when uh, women started to go to work and it was all about, uh, don't quote me on the actual timeline where it happened, uh, when it happened, but it was very much of uh, women not feeling that they are qualified enough to do the exact same jobs that the men were doing. Um, so this is the originate where, where it started. But essentially what it means is it's not just applicable for women. It's just literally that you are feeling like an imposter in certain environments that you are, you know, when you're saying like fake it till you make it. 
and and sometimes somebody will find out that you're actually an imposter so um so you feel that you're not worthy enough or you're not good enough and um Brilliant. so yeah that's pretty right. much it uh vicky you've raised your hand yeah i know how to deal with it <laughs> can you dare oh, to share oh, sorry, sorry, vicky, <laughs> I, I clicked the wrong button can you thank you I'm training at the moment to be a Haven Inn practitioner. So I'm looking for people to do case studies on and Haven Inn can absolutely help with imposter syndrome. So um, if you'd like to be a case study, I'll practice on you. Yeah, I'm here to be practiced on, yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic, excellent. Uh, Neil? Uh, if I sort of interpret it correctly, hopefully I, I do, then, then yes, absolutely. flipping lootly. Um, but the thing which I tend to have, which I might be sort of blessed or horrible with, I don't know, is I very, very much feel like an imposter when I'm trying to do something which isn't my core stuff. And I do two things about it. I sort of decide whether it's something I'll ever be able to do. And if it is, I think, yeah, OK, I'll go do some training, which I do. And if it isn't something that I do, I try not to do it again because it's embarrassing and horrible. And I just try and get somebody from a group like this to help me with it. Um, I don't know if that helps in any way, shape or form, but if I'm understanding it correctly, then yeah, I go into meetings and people ask me a question and I get this sort of clammy sweats and go, bugger, I don't know, I don't know. But that that tends to be the way I deal with it, if that helps. You know what, I think Neil's dead right there. I think everyone at some point does have imposter syndrome, especially, especially at the start of a new venture. The start, when you start off on a... Um, when I started, definitely 10, 11 years ago, um, I got it then. Um, but seven awards later, and it goes. Yeah, and for me, it's, do you know what? So, social proof. Yeah. Social proof helps with, if you, go, if you go out there and get 20 testimonials from people, do you know what I mean? All of a sudden, that's your imposter syndrome gone. Because if other people are saying you are amazing, it, it should then... Absolutely. reflect back on you uh, uh, absolutely i mean in, in paul's case exactly a point point made i mean he started off with like the the turning up award and then then for, for not being late he's, he's getting very good at it now uh, no, if I, listen, if I add all of those up, there's like 73 all ah, right okay <laughs> fair enough uh we'll go to lee next lee raise your hand text yeah, I think Paul. Uh, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. When you first start out, uh, I, I think I'd be surprised if anybody doesn't. And I think, in particular, more so if you've been in um, corporate or you know you've been employed most of your life, and then you come out and then you start a, a business yourself. I think I think you you fall into that uh, category straight away because you haven't got the support uh, of of an employer to protect you, so you feel very very vulnerable. Uh, and like Paul said, yeah, yeah, you you cure it by just asking people to tell you how good you are. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's some great advice. Uh, we'll go to Gary next, then to Vicky, then to Adam. I would question whether you know everybody. I think uh, I'm, I'm fascinated to hear that Paul is over it because I think we all suffer from it. But I think it's having the ability to go. Uh, actually, nobody can know everything about every subject. And it's having the ability to go, actually, well, listen, I can help because I know where to look. And that's what we do say in the IT industry is that look, no one person knows everything about IT. What we're good at is going away and finding out the information. Where is the information? And we can go away and do that. And then we can put it into action. Um, so I think defining for yourself what you think you're not good at and is that realistic? in believing that you should know everything about your industry. Um, it, it's worth just defining that and making that easier for you to understand and accept. Yep, some fantastic points. Uh, Vicky, go back to yourself. I think it's a bit simplistic to think that you can train yourself out of imposter syndrome and that it's just something that disappears with time and enough compliments. I think the whole point of imposter syndrome is it will get you at any point regardless of how well skilled you are and how many people tell you how good you are it's it's just self-doubt yeah. but you know it can just come over you at any point and I don't agree you can train yourself out of it people don't always sit around having it but um 
it will just appear for some people, regardless of how well skilled they are. Great point, uh, Adam. And then we'll finish on Paul on this one, if you may. Oh, sorry, Dave, was you having your hand up as well, was you? Yeah, yeah, I can answer that. Yeah, okay, so we'll go to Paul and then we'll go. We'll finish on you, Dave. Okay, uh, Adam? So I think, because I, you know, in marketing, I come across it a lot, mainly when I'm trying something new or if I'm doing something and then it doesn't necessarily work how I expect, you sort of have that moment where you go, am I, do I actually know what I'm doing here or am I just winging this and seeing if I actually get the results? So I think from my point of view, it is always that moment where you sort of just go, yeah, okay. I, t I tend to just sit there and go, okay, so I know stuff works. I know I'm getting results and I know I'm showcasing it through getting new clients and doing things like that. So I think it's, for me personally, it's going back and looking at my wins and going, actually, yeah, it's marketing. Some things are going to fail. And I think that's not necessarily true of just marketing. It could be true of anything. Some things that you do will just not work out. So it's a case of looking at your wins and going, well, actually, I've done really well here, here and here. So I must be good at it because it's working. Uh, that's good. Um, so, uh, Mr. Gill, uh, just to finish this one off. Yeah, I'm just going to say that you're not going to specialize in every part of your job or whatever trade you are. In my case, we there's so many different aspects say the fire protection, the intruder, the access and all so on and so forth. So whenever you are with a client, depending on what they're asking you, you can always say, well, my colleague specializes in that. I will come back to that tomorrow or whatever. So I don't think you necessarily have to answer every single question because you're not going to be able to do, you're not going to be able to do it. So yeah, you really yeah. have to rely on your expertise of your colleague or whatever. Fantastic, Dave. I mean, I, I think personally, Yannick, it's a, it's a brilliant question to start because there is no right, there's no wrong answers. Um, most people go through this at some point, me included. It's a case of thinking, hang on a second, what the heck? Why are people listening to me here? Um, and it's a case of it's it's great. Vicky, you, you put a comment on there. I haven't actually got, unfortunately, can't see them. Even when the guys, oh, yeah, I've had to bite, I've had to bite my tongue. Me, I haven't had to bite my tongue today. Uh, Pierre, I, I, I loved your question again. So something we should get lots of people involved in. Uh, but looks like you've written it down, so you're not going to fall for the for the common mistake most people have. So Pierre, what's your question? Okay, it's uh, what are your business hacks, tips, recommendations, books, podcasts, apps, etc., that you'd like to share with the good people of the BSO and the Bear? Fantastic. So good tips, uh, books, except for Yannick had crying. She was late on and she's, she's on fire. Right, you've been drinking Red, Red Bull, have you, Yannicka? Uh, no, no, just like five cups of coffee or something like that. So um, I would say uh, I, will, I will leave the books for, uh, for, for others to comment as well. Um, but what I would jump in is uh, some productivity software that are absolutely amazing to use. Uh, so, for example, like it depends, obviously, uh, what exactly you're using, but obviously, you know, we have the the usual suspects of Trellos and Canvas and, and all that uh, and MailChimps. But what is an amazingly good project management software is ClickUp. So have a look at that. There is a free version, which is quite uh, offers quite a lot of uh, functions. It obviously has a premium version as well. But have a look at ClickUp uh, if you're looking, especially if you're working with teams and you want to share uh, some workload and you can uh, share who sees what as well. Brilliant. OK, we'll go to Vicky Lovegrove next. Vicky, raise your hand. Um, I've got a book, yep. which I read at the beginning of the first lockdown, and it's called The Element, there you go, How Finding Your Passion Changes Everything by Ken Robinson. It's a really lovely book. It's, um, it says what it says on the book cover, really. Um, so <laughs> I'm really interested in creative thinking. Um, goes in with all my coaching stuff. But it's this would actually help you, Annika, with your imposter syndrome as well. It's it's um cool. Yeah, it's a really good book. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Mr. Lander, you were next with your hand raised, then we'll go to Neil. 
Um, a couple of apps that you might find useful. Um, IFTTT, uh, you can get it on both app stores. Uh, it's If this, then that, uh, it adds real automation through your phone to do stuff that really, really works and um, helps speed things up and does loads and loads of stuff, can interact with your phone, with other apps and with lots and lots of stuff. Uh, and it's dead easy to use. So search for if this, then that, I-F-T-T-T. And also, um, if you're like me, um, you want to read more books, but you haven't got the time or inclination to sit there for hours. Um, I use a thing called Blinkist. Um, Blinkist is an app you can get, and it gives you um, audio books. And as well, it, it shortens books down into really concise and precise, what they call blinks, these little cut down chapters. And it's an audio. It's really, really good. Okay. So have a look at Blinkist. Brilliant. That's, that's great, Paul. Uh, we'll go to Neil next and then go to Adam. If, uh, if I'm not ready to introduce you, Adam, if you jump in after Neil, I'll have to go and quickly sort the dog. Bear with it. So, Neil. Uh, ironically, I, I was going to go oh, kind yeah. of the other way there, Pierre. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are suggesting a lot of very, very good applications, but I'm going from a, from a Luddite point of view. Um, a lot of our clients and us included during lockdown have had time to because we've not been having so much work to work on our business rather than in our business um, and I know that's an obvious thing that we all know but it has transformed the way that we work by getting away from all the technology thinking about how we work and planning some time in every week to target people to come up with a new plan for this and the customers that have done that our customers have head and shoulders ahead of their competition if they've spent that time and um, technology great but sometimes to get away from all that and use your brain a little bit as well uh, brilliant uh, adam nice perfectly timed that brett um mine's a website and i know charlotte's a big advocate advocate of this website as well answer the public it is phenomenal i'm pretty i'm i'd say i'd probably use it every single day um, in terms of trying to figure out what your audience is talking about, what you actually need, what you need to be talking about. It's just, in terms of content marketing, it's just up there with one of the best things that's ever been invented. Cool. I mean, you, you mentioned it, you mean, uh, Charlotte, you've mentioned it time and time and time again. I really do need to check this out. Uh, in terms of that, I think that's a great piece of advice there. Yeah, it does have a sister website as well, which you can, it's got, I think, three websites in the group and the other two do various different bits as well, which are good to look into. They're not necessarily down the content idea front, but they are helpful. And um, what are they, Charles? They're, I can't remember the names of them. One, I think, is Ask. Let me have a Google of it now and I'll come back to you. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and Gary? Sorry, yeah, I think I've mentioned this one before. Uh, a book that I've just read is They Ask, You Answer. That's that's quite a good book. And it, I guess to, to a certain degree, it's... Um, similar to uh, ask the public reading if you're a business owner i just think you have to read read what you can about your business magazines this that and the other i think coaches are a good coach is invaluable and i really do um i'm, I'm a big advocate of tony robbins big american life coach uh, very very good been very very useful for me um, and there's a magazine again it's an american magazine called the success magazine that's quite a good one to get on top of as well Absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, in terms of books, I mean, I've Pierre, it's your fault. It's a case of you've started me off. Uh, I'm, I've already, I already equaled last year's record of reading a book, um, which was which was good. And it was actually a story as well, wasn't it, uh, Pierre? It, indeed, a very good story. It was a very good story. Fact, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but it's uh, uh, Pierre. I'll let you tell them what it is. But I, I have another book which is that one, uh, which I heard basically um, mentioned on the radio, which is about um, obviously changing various habits. And you'll be pleased to know uh, I, I did order it from Amazon. It did come on time. However, the other book I ordered, surprise, surprise, is now late. It's okay. So they changed, they changed the time. So whatever's happening with Amazon, um, I have no idea. But the other book I've got is uh, Does It Make the Boat Go Faster, uh, which is based on the um, – the GB road team where they went from seventh in the world to world beaters. Um, so Charlotte, you've raised your hand. I, I tell you, you've got those websites. 
Yeah, so one is called Also Asked. It's not by the same people, but what it does is you put your term in or question in and it'll give you kind of like a flow diagram for say somebody asks this question, but they've yeah. also asked this question. So if you're preparing a full blog or piece of content, you can target it all towards one person with different subheadings for the various questions they ask. That's called and what? Sorry, I missed that. That's called alsoasked.com. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Charlotte. And then the third one was just more relevant for my kind of business and our yeah. clients, which is if you if you have articles published, it's very easy to draw them in and see where the links are going. Fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, Pierre, you, you asked the question, is there anything you'd like to share with anybody or any ideas that you may have? Well, how long have you got? I could spend all night on this question. but uh, uh, Enough time for me to go and let the dog back in, but it's a case of go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh well i've mentioned this podcast before but i mean i'm really into the podcast especially when you go out for a walk and uh, multitask you know listen to a podcast or an audiobook and the one i really recommend is modern wisdom which is run by this young upstart called chris williamson and he has such, on such a range of guests that talk about blowing your mind some of these guys i mean and girls um that there's one in particular who is extremely on the money and it's, it's, it's a guy called rory sutherland and he's worth listening to. So check out the Modern Wisdom podcast, especially the Rory Sutherland episodes. There, there's more than one. And, and in terms of apps, this is also slightly off the wall, but we all want to save money, don't we? We all want to bargain. Um, have you heard of Hot UK Deals? Because it's an app and it's also a website, but it's brilliant in terms of right up on the money, sort of the uh, bargains of the minute, you know, deals on food, on tech, on all sorts of stuff um, with comments from the users of the app so it's very very good and again free of charge to use fantastic so it's uh, some, some great things there so we're going to try and bring as many people in as we possibly can uh, becky i mean do you want to start jumping in with some answers as well same as laura and also paul jones i mean it's not just for for members we're trying to encourage as many people as possible to talk uh, becky would you happen to have any any tips or any things that you any hacks that you you find I tried to like just find use little bits of things and get bored, moved on, move on to the next one. So I'm interested for something that's um, very usable that I will stick at. But um, I'm bad. I I hop between everything and run out of space on my phone. And right, no problem at all. Uh, final one, then, Paul, because we do need to move on to the next question. Yeah, if anyone buys anything from Amazon, so if, if, take this site down. Go to my Vicon. Dot com. You register that, it's free, and it gives you, um, and it lists a load of products on there that's for sale through Amazon. And you've got to uh, filter it by um, fulfilled by Amazon. You can find stuff, loads and loads of different crap on there um, that you can save up to like between 40 and 80% off Amazon prices. The only thing is, is that if you want to buy multiple stuff, you've got to check out each one at a time because it doesn't like two of the codes that it gives you. It's completely legit. And you can go, let's say you want, I don't know, you want to charge a cable for your phone um, and you'd know, and, it, and it's priced six quid on Amazon with a discount, you'd probably be able to get it for one ninety nine. So, and, and there's literally all kinds of stuff. There's clothes, there's gadgets, there's electronics. So check out myvipon.com uh, and they make their money from the like commission that they get when you buy from Amazon. Fantastic, but it's no, but it's no good for me trying to order those, is it, Paul? Because that's what I'll get. I'll never get it. Is that right? Well, at least you'll save some money. Might it'll get to you eventually. The rest of us that get normal deliveries from Amazon will be all right. Brilliant, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the question now. Uh, I think for uh, Becky Lawrence, um, you, you you basically you kind of get the gist of how we work here uh, in this one. So it's all about basic collaborative learning, um, as many people as possible jumping in. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go to Mr. Baker's uh, question, if I may. So Lee, do you remember your question? Uh, I think so. Um, it's along the lines of uh, what would you consider to be the, the best type of freebie get, uh, giveaways uh, to, to, you know, for, for, to, to uh, hook um, uh, clients, basically. I think that was about, about it. Okie dokie. So instead of waiting for hands being raised, I'm going to pick on some people uh, to get people's uh, opinion this time, if I may. Uh, I am going to go to Charlotte first, as, a, as obviously as a marketeer. Uh, Charlotte, what would you what would you suggest as giveaways? 
Um, well, I wouldn't call them giveaways because whatever you're giving, if it's your knowledge or anything else, there is value behind it. So emphasize on the value, whatever it is. Um, but usually nuggets of information. So tips and tricks to help your audience are the best kind of giveaways rather than just giving them a piece of service and letting them walk away with it. So we do um, free communications reviews. So we'll sit with people for 30 minutes with absolutely no commitment at the end of it. But it just helps them to kind of iron out, well, what are they doing at the moment? And we just offer advice and personalized tips and tricks. Uh, great. I mean, has anybody here used various hooks, um, basically lead magnets, whatever whatever you want to call them? Uh, does anybody actually use them at the time? Um, just, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go to Gary. Gary, I saw your head nodding there. Uh, yeah, I mean, are you guess are you talking about you know things like you know you squeegee dice and stuff like that and pens, or you want about uh, in reference to your services, Lee? Uh, probably more more along the lines of services rather than actual yeah um, you know uh, uh, gadgets and things like that, you know. Um. So so again, we're doing an IT security review or like uh, um, an IT review. Generally, just you know, again, a, a, a fairly short door opener. Get in, let's have a look at your systems, meet people, see how we can help, um, and things like that. We did have a, as you say, there is cost involved in everything. We did have a ninety-nine pound a month plan for startups, which included uh, a certain amount of support, a website, uh, a Microsoft email address, and, and things like that, just to help out the startups um, and get in with them as well. That went relatively well. I was hoping that would be better than what it did, but um, things like that. Again, sense of value in there, um, but not free. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Lee, before I go to the people, I find if you give away Aston Martins, yeah, they yeah. go really, really well. Uh, I mean, if you give me an Aston, I'm, I'm not really worried about the colour, but it's a case of uh, if you give me an Aston Martin, yeah, I'll, that'll work for me. Uh, Pierre, would that work for you? Yeah, I think. No, no, it wouldn't. No, no, not interested. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. I know. Val would prefer Bentleys. It's a case of, uh, but now if, if things like that, Lee. I mean, I always find they work well, but it depends on what I, what you're trying to sell, really. Okay. Uh, uh, Dean, as you know, but I've always done a, a free consultation before I do any work with anybody. I find that <clears throat> if I, I'm not great at the whole marketing thing, as you know, but when I can get somebody face to face with me uh, and explain what I can do for them and what they need me to do. That really helps. And, you know, I do, as you know, I do 30 minutes to an hour worth of free consultations just to get the best out of what I can do for them. Uh, and the one thing I'm trying now, as you, some of you may know from Facebook posts, I'm actually now doing a um, free uh, nutrition assessment where I'm basically asking people for uh, a week's worth of the food they eat at this moment in time. They ping that over to me and I'll give them a... A, a bit of um, how can I put it a gentle nudge in the right direction without giving it all away and that's what the plan is with that new idea mm -hmm. uh, Neil uh, well first of all I'll have the Aston Martin please that sounds great um, but um, Charlotte you were absolutely on the sort of money with that one the only thing that I would sort of say Lee in addition to that is something that we did during the first lockdown which we were frankly quiet we were really really quiet so we did a competition and we said, we'll sort of give somebody a completely free rebrand, or we ended up doing a few. Um, just send us some details of why you think you should win. And that worked fantastically for us because we got some great exposure and did some good work for some really lovely people that needed it, that were struggling. Um, but from a cynical point of view, that worked incredibly well because there were lots of people that came to us saying, I really want what you do. And this is why. So we had a massive list of people that we could contact after the fact and say, when things start to build up and get better, um, let us know if we can help you. And we have helped lots of them at, at discounted rates because it helped us and them. Um, and that still applies at the moment because we're still struggling with, with that sort of extraordinary event. Given your world, you could help people with homeschooling with their IT t sort of problems, etc. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Right, great, great tips. I, I mean, I, I meant, uh, you know, it's uh, after I pressed the button on uh, writing the question and then submitting it, what I meant, uh, or, or what I really look, would like to have said, really, is it, what about no, absolute no no's? You know, what, what should you really, really not ever give away? <laughs> 
Ferraris. It, it, it's too <laughs> crash. Uh, I don't know. It's too crass. I don't know. And, and stick with Aston Martins. You'll be fine. Um, mm. Never Charlie? give away your soul. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. too late. <laughs> I've been married three times. <laughs> <laughs> the absolute thing you should never give away is the whole thing. So whatever you're giving, give away all but a little bit. So they can go away and take what they've learned, as Dean said. He's given them enough so they can try and mould it themselves, but not enough that it will last long term. So at some point they will need help. Mm-hmm. Yep. So That's... just make sure there's a strategy and something in it for you. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. it's a pointless exercise. Kind of like a drug dealer giving a free hit of heroin just to get hooked. <laughs> right. But with more morals. Well, with the with a guide to, and, and a map to the nearest uh, A and E department, just j- just to be on the safe side. Exactly. Yeah, no problem at all. Lee, hopefully that's helped a little bit, and hopefully it's given some ideas to other people as well. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Fa- fantastic. Okie dokie. So, um, where should we go next, Adam? We're going to go to you, if we may. You've been very quiet today. Is that because you're tired, or is it because you know we're recording, so you're in, on your best behaviour, or? always on my best behavior i was going to jump in on the last one but as standard charlotte basically said everything i wanted to say so i can't improve on what charlotte See, i said. think i think adam waits for charlotte to say stuff and then all he does is go yeah i was going to say what charlotte, Hold on. Says. charlotte how many times has it also worked vice versa i mean in fairness in the breakfast the other day i had two full post-it notes written down by the time adam had finished speaking he'd said everything so it does work in both directions it's just back in on your these box, ones Mr. it Lander. tends to be me uh, first. in your box do you know do you know what this is Can you re- mute re- re- reciprocal stuff going on here i don't know it's, it, i mean one of them's like rita Roar in the in the mass singer i don't i don't quite know which one but it's a case of one of them is definitely rita it's not my fault that both of us are brilliant at what we do there you go there you go it's uh jack you know when this goes live can you put like um a, a warning on there for that kind of bit at, at roughly this kind of time yeah cool excellent stuff so um adam so yeah over to your question sorry how do you find your usp nice and simple nice and simple nice do you want, do you want the reason why i asked it so um, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Michelle. Actually. Michelle, you've been very very quiet today, but I know you've had a, a few connection issues. You've been jumping around from phones to to laptops. I have, and I've just realised I'm not on mute. It's a bloody good job. I've been quiet all night, isn't it? <laughs> uh, how do you find your USP? The first question I'd ask is why are you asking that question, Adam? Because I get a lot of the conversations that I have with a lot of clients. They're always saying, oh, do you know, I'm always struggling to find my USP, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of the times I say what I generally do to find it. But I just wanted to get everyone else's opinions on how do they find their own. So for me, uh, what I do personally is I undertake purpose exercise. And I do I refresh on this every year as well, by the way. And what I do is I work out things that are really, really important to me and um, then create a purpose statement around what I'm after. And that is usually my unique selling point because it's all geared towards what I want and what I'm aiming to do for my customers. So for me, it's not about being the best as well. The other thing is don't be the best. You're looking to be unique because if you're the best, you just got to keep on battling over and over again. Somebody will overtake you and you've got to be the best again. Somebody will overtake you, you've got to be the best again. So for me, it's all about being unique. And for me, it's about identifying what my purpose is and how that helps others. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, Sean, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, it's a similar sort of thing. It, we always describe it as kind of starting with why, so your core purpose. If you know what your core purpose is, that should drive the whole reason your business has been created. So if your purpose is about bringing something to your sector or to your clients that isn't there, then that does kind of mold around your difference, but it does have to be completely sustainable. So, I mean, for example, ours is we were the first consultancy to guarantee results in PR. You can't be the first twice. It was completely unique. But if we said our unique difference is that we provide great communication and really good customer service, well, someone else can come along tomorrow and do better. Yeah, a great point. Michelle, I've seen your hand raised. So I'm going to quickly jump, just jump in because I think it's a great question. And I was, I can't remember which member I was talking to the other day about this, but it was, they were asking, how can I find this out? And I heard a story of somebody, I think it was a great, I think somebody in London did it. 
And the easiest thing to do is to actually ask. Ask your customers, what, what would you like? What do you not like about your industry at this precise moment? Is there something that happens? And, and then work off the back of that. Uh, and I think the example was given to me about decorators and the, the, the people, when they knocked on the, on the various doors and actually asked the question, so creating a, a, a new decorating service, we're trying to appeal to this kind of the market. And they were giving things such as, we don't like the fact that people are looking tidy. We don't like the fact that they leave a mess. Uh, they're, they're never there on time. Uh, and we put these kind of things as assurances and made sure, pay top dollar to get the right people to make sure they adhere to it. And then word spread. I think that there is, it's, if you ask your customers, and let's face it, that's how we started the beer. So I'm just, I'm just thinking who, who the founders are. So uh, Paul Lander, you're, you're one of our founders. So is Lee. That's how we started. Was, I mean, you were there right from the very, very beginning. We turned around. So we've got this idea for a company. We've got this idea of where we want to go and how we want to, how we want to take it. But we've got this idea of how to do that. What do you think? So, yeah. Well, it, it, involve all your customers. And the customers actually build the, the, the organization themselves. It's not exactly rocket science, but we're surprised how few people do. Um, so I'm going to go to um, Michelle, who raised your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to flag up as well, uh, something leading on from what Charlotte said about with, with purpose and why. The other thing as well that would be really important uh, that people should need to remember is that the business USP and your purpose for your business should also be very, very closely aligned with your whole life. Otherwise, you're going to end up with um, conflicts between different areas as well. Yep, uh, great point. And uh, Neil? Uh, last point, which has been touched on to a degree, is is just that um, we thought that our USB was um, something to do with the fact that we, we've been rated as one of the best graphic designers in the country. We were so proud of that. We've been shouting it from the rooftops like an absolute maniac. And we found that nobody to get cares. They don't give a damn about it. But what we have found is that when we started talking about return on investments, we suddenly realised that a lot of graphic designers don't do that because graphic design is all fluffy and it's colouring inside the lines and it's drawings, whereas people actually really like the fact that they could take our fluffiness and have a return on their investment. And that has been our killer USB because it's actually what the end user cares about. Um, so it's just to make sure that when people come up with them, it's not something that's personal to them, like they've got the fluffiest dog in the office because nobody cares. Make it about what the actual sort of your customers want to get from you. Uh, brilliant uh, Paul final point on this one because I'm, I've got a lot of questions I need to get through and very little time to get through them yeah uh, do you know I, I think USBs don't exist anymore I, they, they, no one's got anything to, so different that someone else doesn't do the same um, unless you've got an absolutely brand new product that has been invented I think I read somewhere a, a while back that it's more emotional selling points where um, emotion will get people to pull the trigger on your service more than something that you can potentially think of that is unique because that potential client might have heard of someone else doing that unique selling point. So I, I, I think instead of USPs, I think people need to focus on their ESPs more. Fantastic, I think. Uh, Adam, but these are the kind of answers you're expecting? And did they, did Yeah, apart from Paul, who just threw a spanner in the works, but I kind of, I get where he's coming from in terms of when you do your marketing, everyone buys on emotions and then justifies it with intelligence afterwards. So, but yeah, uh, pretty much what everyone said is what I say to people when they ask me anyway. So it's good to know. It's I mean, a general agreement. Yeah, I mean, just just picking on a couple of people who are actually been very quiet here. Paul Jones, who's been very very quiet here. Uh, the, the company he set up, the product he actually provides, that's got a fantastic USP, preventing um, punches in, in vehicles. Lawrence, the, the thing is with that, there's there's there's, there's all that is already there's run flat. BMW have got run flat, so his, his product is slightly different, but it's not unique. None of us are. How many millions of web designers out there, graphic designers? IT people, accountants, it's, it's a, we're, we're all in saturated, saturated markets. Apart from, I think, Paul, because I don't, I, don't, I don't know many run flat systems. I dare say there might be a few, but 
do, do you see my point? That I, I, too... I have to fit ones I've, I've not heard of. I mean, in terms of that, I mean, there's always little things uh, which are always different, but it's one of those things. I think this is what some of the way we could actually expand this out into almost an event in its own right, talking about these kind of areas. Uh, I think it's something, I mean, let's face it, we've all got what we would like to consider completely unique ways. Uh, but it's uh, but obviously what we'll do, we'll move on to the next question, if we may. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, so ho hopefully this is all going quite well so far. Uh, sorry, I just had an email from Jack there. Jack's trying to get me to multitask at the moment. Don't worry, Jack, I'm writing things down. It's a case of we haven't got a clock on there, so I have no idea, but I've got times for you. Don't worry, Jack. Um, and, okay, I'm going to go to, wait, who should I go to? Should I go to Charlotte or shall I go to Dean? I tell you what, um, ladies and gents, we're going to have a quick vote on this one. Now, I'm not going to give you any any hints at all, but Charlotte has forgotten what question she's she's actually asked. Uh, so, so no, I, I vaguely know it, okay. but I thought I'd made a note of it, but clearly okay. I hadn't. So we're going to have a vote. Uh, put your hand, raise your hand manually if you want uh, Dean's question. Uh, leave your hand down if you want Charlotte's question. So I'll count you in one, two, three. So we've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So you've got five people raised the hand. Which was that for Charlotte? Was it or was that hand? No, the raise the raise hand was for Dean's. Leave it down was for Charlotte. Okay, sorry, Dean, but we're going to have to go to Charlotte. We're going to go to you next. I know it's terrible. That's that's quite harsh, isn't it? Putting Charlotte on the spot. It is really um, funny though. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, to be fair, I, I did. I did promise that, that I would tell her, but I and you lied. I even yeah. messaged asking for it, and he didn't tell me. So yeah, yeah. So to be fair, it's a case of it's one of those. It's not unethical. It, it's one of those. Uh, Charlotte, um, would you like to guess what your question is, and I'll tell you if you've got it right or not. No, because I think I wrote it a lot better than I'm going to articulate it okay. now. Right. Okay, I'll read it out for you, then, Charlotte. So um, the question was. What do you want to achieve in your business in 2021 and what do you need to get there? Yeah. No. Yep. Ah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was more kind of in any essence, it doesn't need to be particularly marketing, obviously. I asked the question just because I know, Michelle, you did sort of your goal setting workshop and I just thought it'd be interesting to hear what kind of categories people's main priorities fall into and what kind of tools and benchmarks they need to achieve it. Brilliant. So we've got, we've got hands flying up everywhere. Uh, I don't know what order they, these came in, but I'm going to start with Gary. Uh, yeah, marketing strategy. Uh, we have got a marketing uh, company uh, on at the moment, of coaches more than actually doing it for us. But, um, but yeah, a, a good marketing strategy, which we are working on. The challenge, to be quite honest, is, is implementing it is having the time to put it into action. And I think uh, Neil uh, saying this earlier about putting time into your business, working on the business um, instead of in the business, if that makes sense. Um, so the goal is get the marketing strategy out there and active. We've got loads of ideas. It's just making it happen. So that's our big goal for this year. Fantastic. Uh, Adam? Our, our big goal, in, and I'll sit to marketing as well, is to bring it all together a lot neater and a lot cleaner than it is at the moment. So we've got things firing off all over the place um, and it's just adding those little links in between you know, um, the direct mail to the email marketing, to the inbound marketing, to the social selling, adding all those links and making it all sort of seamless, retargeting the works. The challenge is actually finding more of me. If I could clone myself, that'd be brilliant. Um, scary. Very. Oh, the, the rest of the world would be screwed. But in terms of actually helping the marketing team here do it, it would be a lot easier. Um, yeah, we just need more bodies to actually do it because there's so much to do and so little time. No, I, I, think that's, I think that's one of the challenges an awful lot of people will face. Um, so we're going to go to Neil next. Um yeah, uh, I think the, the challenges that I think a, a lot of people are going to be going with are taking it from the personal point of view into business, because we're finding most people are wanting us to come in and, and do some bits and bobs for them because they've got personal challenges. People are off on furlough. People have left. They've had to fire people. They actually are getting fed up of sort of juggling all the home life. They want to change the way they live. And 
I think that's the, the the draw, the hook for a lot of business owners now to to try and make their life easier, make their company go back to how it was 18 months ago where they did what they used to do because everybody's doing different stuff now and it's getting on people's tits in a lot of ways. Fair enough. Fantastic. Um, Yannicka? So the, so the plan is to, to grow um, in terms of... <clears throat> excuse me, virtual assistants and the, the associates, but also um, the plan is to create a ultimate productivity software for businesses. So this is something that um, want to put wheels in motions this year um, and it's probably going to happen in stages so probably not all all at once but but yeah so something that businesses can can utilize themselves. Fantastic. Uh, Becky? Um, so for us, it's, um, it's our 10th year in business this year, in a few months' time, and the challenge is just, is a great PR opportunity. What do we do? Um, it's, um, you. I mean, you've, you've got the, the delegates list on, obviously, which have been sent to you earlier. Uh, there's a number of people on here who could obviously help help steer you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, th and this goes for anybody who's who's not used to doing this. The reason you've got the delicacy list is so you can continue these conversations outside of this forum because I'm, I'm the I, I want to try and finish this for eight o'clock. Um, and there's gonna be an awful lot of things you can discuss further on. Make sure you speak to people you don't know. So, Becky, obviously, you won't know anybody on here at all. So, make sure you, you follow up with the ones you want to follow up with. Uh, everybody's given permission to do that, but I think I think that's a great thing. So, just to expand that out, then, so a quick, quick shout out what would you do to celebrate your 10th birthday? Uh, personally, I would, I would invite Brett around for a big party and give him an Aston Martin for me to get there. But that's that's me personally. But you've got to flip it and do something that your customers care about. So internally, your tenth birthday is a huge landmark, but you've just got to make sure that externally, it's something that will make a difference to your customers. Yeah. Fantastic, uh, Adam. I'm, I'm going I'm to pick on people. What would you do? <laughs> I would do something that the customers actually care about. <laughs> now, to be fair, I would actually, I'd do it in two stages. I would throw one hell of a party internally because I should say it's such a massive milestone that most people don't actually, or, you know, very few people reach. <laughs> Hello? It's just me and my husband who work internally. So um, Throw a massive party enough. between the two of you. Massive. It's a massive milestone. You need to make it special you need to really take notice of it massive party of, in ex, barbados that, oh, that's big yeah that's big so go to barbados and actually just celebrate it because i don't think people actually celebrate internally enough and they don't actually take note of their own success it sort of just gets glossed over in the grand scheme of things so it is a massive thing so actually take some time and actually properly celebrate it and then yeah do an event that actually adds value to your to your clients and it just, you know, advertise the fact that you've now got 10 years experience, you've been doing it, you know what works, what doesn't. And therefore, this is the event that we've put together to celebrate and give you X, Y, Z in terms of value. That's what I do. Great. Fantastic. Uh, anybody else want to just jump on that one? Um, uh, Gary? Yeah, uh, I would uh, work, work on the 10 year thing. And I'd say, right, this year, as a business in our 10th year, hopefully we've grown, we're going to raise £10,000 for charity. And just do a charity event right throughout that 10th year. And at the end of it, hopefully you raise that amount and then give it away to a charity or a number of charities. That's uh, similar to what we were thinking. Um, but I obviously want to hear thoughts before I would say, but no, yeah. that's really interesting, everyone. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, Charlotte, you raise your hand. Yeah, just quickly to round off on it, you can also do something as well, just playing on the number 10. So 10 tricks, but really in depth nuggets of knowledge that your customers will engage with and say the 10 things we've learned over 10 years of business. So the key lessons learned and how that's evolved your service and how it's made a difference to your customer. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. Brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, so Dean, we're, we're going we're gonna to come to you now from AD. Uh, where have you gone? You've moved on the screen. How are you over there? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So your question. Um, so I have written mine down actually, Charlotte, you'd be pleased to know. Um, is your work your passion? And if not, what would it be? But more importantly, what's holding you back from doing that? 
there's, there's some good questions this time. Normally we've got lots of fluffy questions. People are going for real, like deep, deep things here. I'm, yeah, it's we're gonna we're gonna have to change this for the next one. We're gonna have to have a quota. Um, Neil, raise your hand. Um, in simple terms, just as the answer in it straight as is, yes, absolute passion for what I do, and and I just love it. I don't think I'll ever have a, a Aston Martin like Brett seems obsessed with, but yeah. It is a joy doing what we do. And um, I think if you can find that, you will be successful because it's just more fun. You put more passion into it. You put more care and attention into it. You want to succeed because it's what you think about when you go to bed. It's, it's a great thing. And if you don't have that, go do something else because it is brilliant, honestly. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Adam, I think you're next. I'm pretty much saying I love what I do absolutely love what I do the only thing that could possibly make my job better is if I had more animals in the office um, and the only thing that is stopping that is people who don't like the animals that I do which is kind of unfortunate really because they're just that's not fair but honestly I absolutely look I'm very much like Neil I go to bed thinking about marketing I wake up at like four o'clock in the mor morning with like a marketing idea going okay I need to email myself that so I don't forget it when I fall back to sleep it's it's brilliant. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, brilliant. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Adam would like the animals with lots of scales or lots of teeth. And no legs. And no legs. Yeah. Oh, no, because I have lizards. So I'll take the teeth and the lots of teeth, scales, legs. Basically, if they're a reptile, I want them in my office, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Also, also probably keeps away burglars as well, to be fair. It's a case of it has an added benefit. Uh, Yannicka? Um, I I wanted to say I absolutely love what I do, but I didn't know about that, um, if it makes sense, because I always knew that my background is in arts. I love arts. That's my passion. But I always I was always good with systems. I love doing admin work, but I thought it's like part of my artwork and I actually didn't realize that this is what my core passion is. Yeah. So um, long, long story short, this is this is what I do now. And just realizing that although by like forced, so I was forced to to close the business, but I now do what I love because of that. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Vicky? Yeah, I was just thinking about this. Yeah, definitely my passion. I mean, I've been working in creative industries for 30 years. Um, I was just thinking that I decided when I was 14, I wanted to be a graphic designer. And I don't think you can really push yourself for that long unless it's a passion. So, yeah, it's definitely a passion. But what I really enjoy about my work at the moment is um, working with other creatives and seeing them being passionate in their business. That's, that's just the best bit for me, really. Uh, and, and finally on this one, Gary? Uh, yeah, same here. I absolutely love what I do. I think the, the core element to what I do for me personally um, would be I love learning. Give me a matrix link and just download information to me because IT is always learning. Uh, one of my big passions is uh, helping people. And, and that's quite corny, but I love it when I can go into business and improve what they do and they give me a challenge and I take it away and I, and I go right okay will this work for you let's come back and get that passion into their business to get it moving to improve on it and communication and I was quite fortunate that I've always done pretty much what I, I've wanted to um, but three years ago four years ago now I took redundancy and started my own business which made it even better somebody asked me I think someone was asking how can I make it better either more of me which is a bit scary or for someone to take away the boring parts of the business. Although I'm kind of interested in those, but the sales part of it, not really. I just want to get in and fix these people's problems. Yeah. So uh, that's how I improve it. Bring on a salesperson. That's it. I mean, I, I imagine from here, I mean, just in terms of um, basically pretty much everybody I know on here, does here just actually people just love what they're doing? Let's, let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, Dave? Dave, was that just yeah? Yeah, you, you agree? You love what you're doing, or yes, you want to say something, or I'm okay, not... and yeah, I can say something. <laughs> so um, I've been doing it for 27 years. <clears throat> so you know, even now, if I get a call three o'clock in the morning, I still enjoy it, still love it. 
Brilliant, fantastic. I, I think that's probably the. I mean, anybody who is watching this, anybody you're speaking to, is the real. It's the real challenge. Uh, Paul, watch your language. We have a child on board. Um, it's. I think it's those who are passionate about what they're doing. It, it just shines through, and that probably leads back into one of your USPs. It's the passion you show with your customers that that that, that, that actually real really shows through. In all fairness. So we're going to move on to the next question, if we can. I'm not going to get time to put everything in. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go to Mr. Sargent, if I may. Uh, I like your question. And also, I'm kind of hoping that you do remember it, seeing as you only actually posted it a few hours ago. Um, my question, although I'm sure I phrased it better when I wrote it on there, is um, what are your tips and tricks for chivying customers along with supplying what they said they supply or making a decision finally giving you the order after expressing interest it, it's it's tips and tricks on chivying customers along because i know we certainly struggle with it and i'm i'm certain lots of you guys do yep it's uh, for, for those who are interested actual neil's question is four lines long uh, but i'm not going to go through all of that because we do need to finish in the next 20 minutes so um sharp we're going to go to you first yeah, we ran a, um, a client survey with all of our customers last year. And one of the key things that they absolutely loved about us was our ability to nag. <laughs> and so basically what, what I've done to kind of systemize that so it doesn't take out my whole day is not first thing in the morning after I've sorted my emails out, I will just do all my chases for that day. So that will be prodding them with an email. Different clients respond differently. So it takes a bit of time initially. I'm talking about if you've got the client on board and you're chasing yeah. them for yeah. sending stuff through. Different clients respond differently. So we've got one client that needs to be WhatsApped, one client that you message directly on Teams, one client that prefers a phone call followed up by an email. And when you get to know those particular methods and the best ways for contacting them, remember them and just pop them into your daily chases. And eventually they'll just get sick of hearing from you. So they'll just send you through what you need. Yes. Yeah. And you only know that through trial and error, I suppose, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So just summarize now, that's just grind them down. <laughs> okay um, it's effective yeah, absolutely I, 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 I agree with you 100 percent so gary sorry yeah um yeah, yeah i agree with what charlotte said um also set dates give, give them give them kind of no, i wouldn't call them deadlines but say look we really need this by this date otherwise we're going to be taking on other projects which might push you back a little bit and i really want to get this sorted for you um start them off with some ideas what charlotte was saying about the communication methods uh we find don't just send emails text them if you've got their text number they don't tend to get same number of texts as they do in yeah. things like whatsapp and emails um and things like that um and if you really want to do this it could avoid it a little bit but you know say look as at the end of this month at the end of this month uh, the cost is going to go up or well, at the end of this year the cost are going to go up and i don't like using that one but it's true in some cases we had a client on today um they're going for a broadband connection all the all the prices of broadband are going up at the end of january we've kind of given them a little bit of a nudge friendly nudges yeah yeah that's one we've never done i have to say with that that one we've never tried that one yeah. the um paul i mean I, I know this got raised in one of the breakfast events um and you'll be pleased to know that uh, neil actually adopted the email that you mentioned and he's had a massive uptake off the back of of an email to do it do you, do you want to raise that what that email was in terms of that oh, you go for it you go for it no wrong right so no not neil i mean paul sorry yeah um the, uh, the i gave a tip um and it's uh, uh, it's called closing the loop and this email is works in every single industry we have been using it for the last four or five years and it's the magic bullet to get across um, to those clients who will not return your call you've given them an absolute fantastic proposal you know it's great for them the price is fantastic but they just don't get back to you and you email them you contact them there's no um, return there's nothing no response closing the loop more or less not Every time I've used it, I've got a response. Every single time. I've had 100% hit rate. And if you go to, I'll, I'll find the link for you. And it takes all emotion uh, out of um, the buying process. It takes all emotion out. So it deals with, uh, let me get it. Hang on. Closing the loop. Uh, magic email. 
And so it cuts out all emotion and it literally more or less guarantees your response. And it's from a website called winwithoutpitching.com. And I'll put the link in so everyone can get it. Don't edit the email because the email close rate, the response rate you get without editing it. So it's got subject closing the loop and it goes, hi, Dave, I haven't heard back from you on your new website so i'm going to assume you've gone in a different direction or your priorities have changed let me know if we can be of assistance in the future regards paul and that's it and it removes all emotions and reasons for the prospects to continue to avoid you so ideally you want a response any kind of response even if it's a no yeah. so you can just clear it out and it this is, is what this does so you used it neil then I, no, but we, we've stumbled on things that are very similar to that, where we, we almost say, um, we're not going to chase you any longer in a nice way. We'll leave you alone and we'll close that job. Um, and that tends to be one that does get some responses. Obviously, we're not writing it as well as that by the sound of it. But yes, a similar idea. You you know, said, do you know what? It's scary when you first send this email like it is, because human nature dictates we need to flower it up a bit we need to soften it a bit we need to make it a little bit softer and when you mess around with the email it takes the effectiveness away so you'll be scared the first time you ever use it because you'll think to yourself oh my god is that cold is that really really cold but no it's it's just all emotion out <laughs> so then there's no pressure on them so they they naturally go oh, all right oh do you know what? i will respond in a weird way, Paul, I'm going to do it because I've got probably half a dozen that I'm at that stage where I, I actually don't mind if they say no. I just kind of don't want to have to chase them anymore. I'm so really bored of it. Do, do no. you know what? You'll find that when you send it to those prospects, you will be really surprised how many come back to you and say, oh, do you know what? Yeah, we want to we want to do something now. We, it's the right time. Oh, yeah, we've been meaning to get in contact with you. I bet you you'll get some of those responses. Just good, good just tips to, from all of you. Thank you. Yeah, just just to finish this last question or that question off there, and then we'll go, go probably get one more question, perhaps two. Um, just in the future, Neil. Just I mean, from a sales perspective, is to manage the process. the the whole The whole trick to sales and effective selling is managing what happens next at every single step of the way. If you can do that. And then, and literally, you just guide people through every single step and hold their hand through that. What happens is that people naturally, your the chance of you actually having this problem of having to keep chase chasing will reduce. We'll just we'll we'll just stop. The, the example I always give it's a bit like if you if you just think of sales, it's a bit like trying to walk down a hospital corridor. And you want them to walk through the big door marked exit at the end. But as in any hospital corridor, there are lots and lots and lots of doors where they can they want, they want to try and get away. And, and that's what people will naturally want to try and do. The, the trick is, is if you can walk two steps in front and physically lock the door as they get to them. So, for instance, price might be something that people throw up as an objection. Get the price out early before they start asking about price. Yeah. So you can you can cut it off there and then if you need to, it's about could be about with you in your case could be things like um, how long will projects take, or what kind of things you're going to need for us to work on this project. We're going to need to have this this and this. If you can't do that in this time scale, we, we can't we can't work with you because you're going to need this. Is that okay? Yes, mm -hmm. great. You've locked the door and eventually get to a point that there's only one door left because you'll know all the objections what people come across. You get one. You make it one option. There's to a go dozen through. of them every time that yeah. you know are yeah. coming. But yeah. you've, you've only almost got one door to go through, and people at that point will get scared. They'll think of anything. So you give them an option out, saying, "This is what people, most people will do now. If you're happy to do that, we do that. If you're not, great. Have a think about it. But I'll follow you up in a week, week and a half. Mm. And if it's a no, that's perfectly fine. But all I'm going to ask for at that point is a simple yes or no. And off the back of that, generally you'll get a yes or a no. Just say, just tell people it's okay to say no, and generally you'll do it. And if you and if they don't adhere in that kind of time, you might give them an extra week and say, "Yep, thank you very much for your time. Really, really so you must have something else on." And that, they'll either come back or just disappear. But nine times out of ten, you've already front ended it. If that makes sense. 
Makes sense. Makes sense. So, ho hopefully that helps there. So we've got uh, last couple of questions to go through. We've, we've lost Lawrence has, uh, has been called away by his good lady. Uh, Lee's had a remote job. He's had to jump on to very, very quickly. So we've got a total of three questions left. Uh, we're going to have time for one. And I'm going to go to... We're going to go to Michelle. Michelle, do you remember your question? No, this is the first time I can't remember it. So we get, I've got three options to go to. I'll, I'll go to Michelle's and she fails miserably. <laughs> what was the question? Right. Okay. So the, so the question quite, I'm, I'm very disappointed in you, Michelle. I'm very disappointed indeed. Um, but the question was, it's, so it's January 27th and six, six days past the habit building stage. Continue. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so what re resolutions did you set for your business and how are you getting on with them? I think it's a nice one to finish with. Um, and uh, sorry, Dave, we haven't had a chance for yours or Gary. We haven't had a chance for yours either there, but we'll we'll finish on this final question. Uh, Becky's gone straight in with a hand up here. Uh, Becky? Um, so we've never really taken annual leave before working as a husband and wife. And so we're actually going to book in block weeks of holiday whether it's together or on our own and just to actually have some time off i was going to say you're going to tell him you're going to book holiday and tell him or to just just go and, and it'll be surprised exactly. when the kids are still there oh, and, oh she's gone <laughs> um but yeah actually just take some time off have it booked in and yeah enjoy it and, and, and have you done go that to Barbados. <laughs> yeah uh, i haven't done it yet but um hopefully next week or not next week now it's really busy maybe the week after what about the weekend or the evening after this call? Oh, sorry. I have to warn you, Becky. If you don't give Michelle proper answers, she'll get you. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely after school. <laughs> Laptops closed. <laughs> Fantastic. Are there any other resolutions people have set? Paul, Paul, you've been uh, Mr. J Paul Jones. This is not Paul Lander. Paul Jones, you've been very, very quiet today. Have you set yourself any resolutions? Um, no, nothing really. Just more lack of delegating concentrate doing stuff more myself than delegating stuff that I try and avoid. <laughs> cool, and, and, is, and is, that, is that going well? Yeah, I'm getting, I can turn the computer on now and Zoom, so start. <laughs> Always a good start, that's, that's, a, that's a fantastic one. Uh, who else would like to jump in? Who, who else has set any resolutions? Uh, Jack, have you, uh, is that a raised hand or are you just applauding the question? No, it's meant to be a raised hand. Press okay. the button. No, I was going to say I set a resolution this year was um, last year I kind of went on the, the front of get as much work as I can and uh, sort of live for work where this year I realised that I spent a whole entire year just focused around my business and not kind of around my family and just the small little things. So I kind of lost out on a lot. But obviously I know building a business is key for everyone and like it's like a child itself nurturing it. But I tend to sort of blown off family events and family kind of little tiny things which meant a lot to them but not to me until I realized afterwards that I spent my whole entire year working for other people when really it was my family I wanted to you know I missed out on so this year it was it's balance work and family and don't feel bad for turning down work for family sort of thing fantastic I think that's a great point absolutely great point um anybody else going to, val you've not mentioned anything today at all it's uh have you said you, you always want to set goals and things like this have you set any resolutions yeah um basically we do two things every day uh which we've not done before nothing to do with work but uh we walk every day and we do yoga and the reason we do that is because the more physical exercise you do the more energy you get the more energy you get the more you can put back into your business Simple as that. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Pierre, have you set any resolutions? You've been very quiet again today, Pierre. I'm not quiet. I'm noisy normally. All right. Uh, yeah, I resolved not to set any resolutions at all, which got rid of that resolution. Uh, are, are you sticking to it? Yeah, it's gone because I resolved not to set any. Because I Is think that not technically a resolution in itself? Though? Yeah, but it's self-destructed, like that famous message in Mission Impossible. You know, it's, that's it. It's gone because it's a resolution. Therefore, it can't exist, can it, under the resolution? <laughs> I, I, he's got me confused. He's got me asking for 
my, my, uh, actually, taking up Val's point, I, I have actually a separate Facebook group. Um, I've, I've actually started doing this thing. It's called a ticky ticky sheet. Oh, here we go. This is proof, right? Every day I do certain things and I tick off if I've done them or not. That's impressive, isn't it? So that's a kind any of a of them new by any chance. Sorry? Pierre? Any of them new by any chance, Pierre? New? Yeah. Yeah. Me meditate for five minutes. Uh, read for 30 minutes. Elevate app for 10 minutes. 5,000 steps every day. Um, read, listen to an audio book or a podcast for 30 minutes. A post on Twitter and be in bed by midnight. There we go. And you know what? And you know what, Pierre? If all else fails, you'd be really good at one of those people checking off, making sure toilets have been cleaned. You know what? <laughs> can I just can I just pick up on something there? Yeah. Did you call it a ticky ticky sheet? Yeah, it's it's got this its name. Is that what it actually is called? The ticky ticky sheet. Yeah. It's what or have you just please tell no, me no, you've just made that up? If that's an official thing, no, no, someone needs to lose their job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great name, and it tells you what it is. It tells you what it is. It's a ticky ticky. Normally called a DMO. That's not a thing. No, what, what, sorry, Val. What was that, Val? I said it's normally called a DMO, a daily method of operation, or an activity sheet that you can complete every day. I'll be honest. I think I prefer ticky ticky sheet. I'm, I'm, I'm no, going to be honest. Well. Ticky ticky thing. Ticky ticky sheet is not sticking. I, I, I actually quite like ticky ticky. Just to annoy Adam more than anything. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, Gary. 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 How much more work can I give Gary? That's it. Uh, yeah, the yeah. real list is to go down to the shop, check your list, and buy more Nutella, more booze, more chocolate, <laughs> more bacon every day. That's my real list. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, just quickly, just, just to close this little bit off there, Pierre, can I, can I suggest you copyright the name quickly? So I think it's going to absolutely fly. You'll be a millionaire overnight. Uh, I didn't create that. I wish I had. Well, it wasn't me. It was someone else. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, any any other resolutions? Uh, Dean, I don't know. Obviously, you, you know one of our on a personal uh, yeah, level. Yeah. Is that I'm aiming to obviously uh, uh, basically um, get to 13 stone three uh, by the 1st of October. Michelle, you'll be happy to know I've actually put dates in there. And, and I, I'm actually doing very well with it because I don't know if Dean's actually realised, but I've actually done something today, Dean. What I said I was going to do when I can actually do it. Okay, that's good. I've got into a shirt. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's one, that's one to go on your ticky ticky sheet. I've got on a ticky ticky sheet, yeah. It's a case of... Um, <laughs> It's, I uh, know for those who don't know, at the start of the year, I went and bought five shirts purposely that I, I wouldn't fit in. And I, I mentioned to Dean that, okay, as soon as I can get into them, I'm going to wear Star Wars shirts again. So I can now get in them and uh, they don't pull too much. Have all the buttons fastened, Brett? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Oh, just and, and, and tucked in and everything, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. It's, I'm, I'm quite happy. It's, uh, oh, Val's changed. I'm going to say. Sorry, guys, I'm just on call. I'm just turning you on to mute for him. No problem at all. No, not a problem at all. Hey, come on, then. We've got three minutes left. Uh, any other final resolutions at all? Uh, oh, Vicky, you, I've always told you you're one of my favourites. Uh, if anybody saw the comments there from Vicky, uh, so you can tell I've lost weight by my face. Is that because he doesn't quite fill as much of the screen as it used to before? Yeah. Uh, it's, You're just uh, sitting further away, Brett. Yeah, that's what he says. It's camera angles, Vicky, camera angles. Uh, Gary? Yeah, mine's a classic, unfortunately. <laughs> it is, um, and, and I had a message from Dean, so Dean's the man that's going to make this happen for us, uh, is, to, is to get fit and lose weight because of what I think Val said about additional energy, need the additional energy as the business grows. It's just the challenge of what they call the law of diminishing intent. The more you want to do it, you go to do it, you fail. The more you go to it, want to do it, fail, 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 then you just don't do it because you know you're going to fail. I need to get past that. And Dean's the man to do that. He's, he's, a, very, he's a very good option. I mean, uh, I have to be impartial, a bit like the BBC. There are other options available, but Dean is on here and, and, that, and Dean's the person I see. So, nah, uh, Brett's lying. Dean's the person. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No problem at all. Thank, thank you. We've just had two more cancellations, and Adam, thank you very much now. Now, uh, Ladies and gents, I think that basically brings us to the end of the meeting. So there are two other questions. Dave, apologies, I couldn't get yours in there. Uh, and Gary, but we was talking about IT, so... Was boring I was boring anyway. I was never going to put it into yours. Yeah. Yes. But those that we didn't answer, why don't we put them in the group to carry on engagement building? Which group? The BSO group. Oh, you mean the Facebook group? Yeah. Why not? 
There you go. Those that you um, can't answer, put in there. Fantastic. Unfortunately, we have a slight issue that Dave Gill's not in the Facebook group. Can you please put them on the Facebook page and tag people in, and then it'll encourage members to like and engage with the page as well as the group. Oh, for a was. Good thinking. No, you're not actually in the Facebook group. We've done an, oh. an, an analysis. Oh dear. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm, well, I called you tomorrow then. Sort it. Yep, yeah, no problem at all. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry, Charlotte. We'll get him. We'll get him in there. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll get those to them. We'll get that into the Facebook uh, page. I mean, no, not a problem at all. Over the next few days, this video will be will be live. Um, Jack is is going to be doing some video editing for us, uh, which should be great. Uh, we'll put we can put apologies in advance about Paul's language. Is that okay, Jack? Yeah, okay, that's absolutely fantastic. So, ladies and gents, it's eight o'clock. Thank you very much for, for coming on tonight. Hopefully you've enjoyed the the, the question time format. It's, it seems like it's been ages since we've run one. It really does seem aged. But are you still enjoying it? Yeah, that's definitely. It. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's, that's absolutely great. Anybody not enjoyed it? No? And and, and Becky, was it, was it quite what you expected? I don't know what I expected really, but yeah, it was good. I, I think I've actually got some questions I could ask now. I wasn't sure what what to ask but um brilliant fantastic it's going, I'm glad, as, a, as a visitor who didn't really know what was supposed to be happening I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it so um as always keep engaging ladies and gents um uh, keep coming obviously to some of the some of the events obviously got lots of other events coming on i think we've got three spaces left on the meet and greet on on friday uh there are a number of visitors on there uh, or a couple of visitors on there as well so ladies and gents thank you very much uh uh, I need to go now because my tea will be burnt very, very shortly. And you may have heard Emma coming back in. Emma, say hello to everybody. Hello. Hi. Oh. Hello. Bye. I say hi. And Dave, Dave said hi and bye. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gents, thank you very much for attending. And I shall see you all again soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening, all. Thank yeah, you. Go on. Bye. 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 B